Hi guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Smita. Welcome to my channel. Now we all love a classic traditional look because it's timeless, never really goes out of fashion. I love classic looks. You've seen me do so many different tutorials, but sometimes you have to shake things up a little bit to make those heads turn. So that's what we'll be doing today. We'll be giving a classic look a little bit of a modern twist just to, like I said, shake things up and just stand out in the crowd. So if you're ready, let's begin. My lenses are from Melon Color and I've listed that in the description box below. I'm going to start by prepping my skin. First, I'm using this lip scrub by Serafine Botanicals. I'm just going to use it on my lips very gently just to scrub off some of that dead skin that's just chilling on top. And then to keep my lips moisturized, I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Lip Balm. And now on to priming my face, I'm using one of my favorite primers. This is the Moonshine Primer by Juno. This acts as a moisturizer and a primer, so it keeps your skin hydrated. And then it also forms a sticky base. So anything you apply over it adheres to your skin really well, which means it's not going to move. If it doesn't move, that means the makeup is going to be long lasting. And for foundation, I'm going to be using the Milani foundation. This is the two-in-one conceal plus perfect foundation in the shade six, which is sand beige. And just for reference, I'm an NC35 with MAC. And I'm going to blend this out with the Real Techniques Kabuki brush. You can use a brush, you can use a sponge. A sponge gives you less coverage than a brush because a sponge tends to absorb the product. Uh, and brush bristles usually don't and make sure you bring the foundation down to your neck as well because you want your neck and face to look like one piece it's been a while but today i'm going to be using one of my favorite cream contours this is the wet and wild contour stick in the shade call me maple and i'll be using this in the usual areas to cut short my forehead length in the hollows of my cheekbones in my jawline as well as to contour my nose And to blend this out, I'm going to be using another small kabuki brush. This one is from Hip Dot. This product has a thicker consistency than a creamy concealer, which I usually blend out with a sponge. Uh, but with this, I like to use a brush because with a sponge, when you try to blend a product with thicker consistency, it doesn't blend seamlessly. It's a little bit more hard. You need to put a little bit more extra effort. Rather with a brush, it's a little bit more versatile, so it blends seamlessly. And for concealer, I'm going to be using two different shades today, which is very unlikely. I very rarely do this. First, I'm going to use the Milani Concealer in 145, which is my actual skin tone to conceal my dark circles, to spot correct around my mouth. And I'm also going to use it on my lids as a base for the eyeshadows. I'm going to blend it out with a damp sponge by ColourPop. And then I will go for a lighter color concealer of Milani in the shade 135. With that, I'm going to highlight my face. If you want to highlight your face, first make sure you've evened out your skin tone using a concealer that's an exact match to your skin tone. For me, that is 145 in Milani. And then over that, you can use a lighter color concealer, which is 135 for me. If you use a light color concealer over uneven skin tone directly, it's going to start looking ashy because usually the dark circles and the dark patches have a blue undertone. So anything lighter over blue starts making it look gray. Woo! <laughs> 
Now to prevent this concealer from creasing, I'll have to set it with a loose powder. The one that I'll be using is this banana powder from Colourpop. I'm going to dip the same sponge into this powder and gently press it in areas where I use the concealer. Now you see so many different colors on the face so you have to bring everything together blend everything out to make it look seamless and for that i'm going to be using the studio fix powder from mac and this is in the shade nw35 now i'm going to go ahead and lock everything in because you don't want the base makeup to move that's when it's going to start creasing it's going to start coming off so it has to stay put just like you have hairspray for your hair you have a finishing spray for your face so the one that i'll be using today is the nyx dewy finish setting spray Moving on to the eye makeup, I'm going to be using this brand new palette by Deck of Scarlet. It echoes spring to me. Such beautiful, subtle pastel colors. But before that, let's go ahead and finish up the brows. I'm going to first start with precisely my brows, my favorite brow pencil from Benefit Cosmetics. I'm going to use this to fill in the sparse areas and give my brows a little bit of a shape. I'm going to fill only the top part of my brows first because I have another exciting product from Deck of Scarlet that they sent with the eyeshadow palette. This is the brow shaping gel, basically a feathering brow shaping gel. Uh, all you have to do is turn the knob at the bottom of the pen. You hear that tick tick noise and you'll start seeing the gel come up on top and you just have to use it to brush your brow hair upwards to get that feathered out brows which I'm absolutely loving these days. And once I've done that, I'm going to fill in the lower part of my brows. And I'm unable to tell whether I like this kind of a brush more or a spoolie brush more. This is a hard brush. Um, I feel like this separates the hair out more in my brows. That gives a more feathered out look than a spoolie. So I guess depending on the kind of look that I go for, I can either use this or a spoolie. Now on to the eye makeup. Let me remove some of that creasing on the lids because I didn't set my concealer with powder. I'm going to first dip into the shade Meadow which is a beautiful shimmery rose color. I don't know how much the camera catches. I'm going to apply this directly with my finger. Today's eye look is going to be simple and exotic. Anybody can pull this off seamlessly. In the darkness. And for transition, I'm going with a bronzer today. This one's from Milani. I'm taking it with a small blending brush by Colourpop. And I'm going to use it in the outer corner, in the crease, blend it out, soften everything up. And I'm going to use the same bronzer in my lower lash line just to smoke it out and again, make it look exotic.
In the inner corner, I'm using Whisper with a small flat shader brush by Folklore. And in the waterline, I'm going to be using the Cream Gel Liner Pencil by Colourpop. And I'm going to use a little extra in the outer corner so I can smudge it out later. To smudge, I'll be using a small definer brush again by Colourpop. So that gives a really nice smoky edge to it. And that's the kind of look that I'm going for today. And then I'm going to finish up with some mascara. No falsies today. Yay. It makes the eye look so much more easier, honestly. Although I have a very easy way to apply falsies, but still, less is more sometimes. And then um, under my brow bones to highlight it again, I'm going to be using a little bit of Whisper. And here's the completed eye look got done so quick. It's so simple, so easy, yet so exotic. Let me know if you guys can pull this off. And if you do, don't forget to tag me. My socials are listed down below in the description box. Next, I'm going to use a little bit more of the Milani bronzer just to bring some warmth into my face, you know, just to give that sun kissed look. And for blush, I'm going to be using Sunkissed by Folklore. It has a shimmer and a matte, so I'm just going to mix both of them and use it together. And to highlight the high points, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Highlighter. If you need information on any of the products that I use, they will be listed in the description box right below this video. For lipstick, I'm going with one of my favorite red shades by Colourpop. This is called Melonade. But instead of applying it with the applicator, which makes it look a little bit more opaque and dark, I'm going to apply it with a brush. That way it looks a little bit more toned down and a little bit more sheer. I went with a really small bindi, a traditional sari. It's actually not a sari, guys. It's a dupatta. And then some temple jewelry earrings. And here's the completed look. I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up if you did. Let me know if you like to change things up a little bit now and then, you know, just to 
not keep up with people's expectations. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. I post new videos every Tuesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. Of course, for your convenience, I'm listing all the products that I used in the description box right below this video. So make sure to check that out. You'll also find my socials there. So if you're not following me on Instagram and Facebook, probably now is the time. And everybody's been forcing me to get on TikTok and I just don't know how to use it. Let me know if one of you is willing to help me out. I'd love that. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon with a brand new one. Bye guys. I'm crying